Welcome to our mini-series on ISO GPS. Today I'm going to talk about functional dimensioning. It is helpful to consider why we might use tolerances in our designs. You want to ensure that any part that is manufactured conforms to the three main principles of a design, and these are form, fit and function. This is where functional dimensioning comes in. We use it to define a part based on how it functions in the final product to ensure the proper assembly of mating parts, improve quality and reduce cost. In doing so, we answer three questions. Does the part look right? Does the part align correctly? And does the part work as intended? Let's look at this simple example, which demonstrates the idea of functional dimensioning. In this case, the first hole will be used to locate the blue part along, its, along the length. Our functional dimensioning is the flushness between the highlighted surfaces. The slot does not locate our part in the direction along the length. This is a good example of good design practice by not over constraining the degrees of freedom of our part. Let's consider the effect the dimension scheme might have on the red part. Remember, we're interested in the distance between the last hole and the highlighted surface. In this example, there are two relevant dimensions to that distance. The 200 mm one, plus or minus a tenth, and the 175 mm plus or minus a tenth. So the total variation is two tenths of a mil that's permissible along the length. That's between the hole, highlighted in orange, and the surface, highlighted in blue. If we look at this alternate example that uses chain dimensioning, we'll see that there are five relevant dimensions. The 200 millimeter dimension along the top, and the four dimensions along the bottom. This means that the total permissible variation is five tenths of a millimeter. Hopefully it's now clear why it's important to consider the function of our part when applying our dimensions. To conclude, we can use functional dimensioning to develop our product technical specification and specify our requirements, ensure our parts are dimensioned so that they will meet our assembly requirements. And using this method, we can achieve good function with relatively loose tolerances. We do this by specifying a good dimension scheme that allows us to specify relatively loose tolerances and doesn't overconstrain our manufacturing. This can be further enhanced by using tolerance analysis to identify key dimensions.